Welcome back. So far in the series we've discussed dab brushes, airbrushes, bristle and particle brushes. Now we move on to wet paint brushes. The next bunch of brushes I'm going to show you require special layer types, which you can see here at the bottom of the layers panel. You'll see we can create a new layer, which is a normal layer, it's the type we've been working with up till this point. A thick paint layer, which we'll discuss in the next episode watercolor layer which we'll discuss later in this episode and liquid ink layer which is what we're going to look at now. So we can create the type of layer we need just by clicking on one of these icons um, or if we select the type of brush that has these properties uh, I'm going to go up here to dab type and I'm going to change it to a liquid ink camel hair brush. Now if you if you watch the layers section if I make a dab uh, it automatically creates a liquid ink layer here. You'll see that was a little bit uh, laggy as well. As mentioned previously, when this happens, the culprit is usually close spacing. So let's just increase that. The other thing that's going to make a huge performance difference uh, is to come over here to the liquid ink panel and reduce the number of hairs in the bristle. And to do that, you actually increase the feature. And turning down smoothness also makes a big difference to performance. Like with the normal camel hair brushes, um, we can adjust the feature here as well, but that's mimicked right here. It's the same thing. If we turn it up here, it'll turn it up there and, and so forth. And we can also enable real bristle if we need to. But most of what you're going to be looking at is, is here in this liquid ink panel. So Corel provides a couple of different ink types. Uh, with no explanation, but going by observation, um, the default is ink plus color. Ink only um, paints without the color and it paints behind. Color only will only paint where there is a stroke applied. Softening seems to clump the ink together, making it look more blobby, but sometimes it actually removes the stroke and uh, you can't paint back over it. So whatever it's doing, it's it's doing it to the layer itself. I'm not sure if this is a bug or a feature. Resist uh, seems to separate the ink dabs, um, giving it a bit of a, a drier look. You can paint over it, um, but you're going to have to to do a, a few strokes to get it solid. Erase just removes everything and uh, you can paint over it without any problems. Pre-softened ink plus color, um, I don't really notice much difference between that and the ink plus color. But judging from the name, it's obviously doing some subtle blobbing. Decreasing the volume gives a dry look. And you can set this to an expression so that you can control it with pressure. If I press soft, it's dry, and then I press harder and it starts to look a bit wetter. Now I'm going to turn off all these jitters so that we can see what's going on one by one. I'm also going to turn up the feature to 50 so that we effectively end up with a two bristle brush. I'm just going to increase the spacing to 200% so we can see each blob of paint perfectly. There we go. So there it is without any jitter. If I add some volume jitter, you'll see those dots get kind of spaced out. If we add some size jitter, you can see that the dot size becomes irregular. I increase the volume jitter under ink droplets, you'll see we start getting some overlapping of blobs. And if we change the size jitter under ink droplets, the actual bristles start to jitter in size. So now if you increase the number of bristles by setting the feature lower and uh, re-enable pressure, set all the jitters around 40%. Now we have a usable brush and because you understand what's going on at the level of the drops, you can adjust it to how you actually want it to look. Incidentally, setting the feature so high that you have a one bristle brush, keep in mind this is only going to work um, if your size is quite low. As soon as your size goes a bit higher, then you start getting more bristles as well. But uh, a one bristle brush can also be kind of fun to play with. Yeah, you can create kind of a, a leaky pen look. Now, if we come back to the dab type, you'll see there's a few different liquid ink types. Uh, we looked at the camel hair. 
um, there's flat palette knife, bristle spray, and airbrush. We discussed all of these um, in a previous episode, just not liquid ink, but it's the same principle. So I'm not going to bore you by going through all of that again. The only difference is that they'll behave with that blobby ink aspect, um, which you can play with in the liquid ink panel like we did for this brush. So uh, let's move on. Now before we get into the proper watercolor brushes, I just want to mention that there is a pseudo wet mode that you can use with most of these brushes um, and it's over here you go to method and you select digital wet when you first try to paint uh, with one of these digital wet brushes Corel wants you to switch the layer composite method to gel now this isn't a, a special layer it's actually a blend mode you can see here it's set to gel we're using a normal layer at first it doesn't look particularly watercolory but if you go over to the digital watercolor panel you can play with the diffusion and the wet fringe to create kind of a pseudo watercolor look personally I think it does a shit job so uh, I personally wouldn't bother with the digital wet brushes rather just move on to the actual wet brushes so to paint with uh, actual wet brushes you can just select wet from here and it'll apply the watercolor effect to whatever brush that you had before in the subcategory you'll see these first few brushes say wet they're controlled by the watercolor panel these uh, real brushes are controlled by real watercolor panel uh, and real wet oil is controlled in in the real wet oil panel now I have to say at large sizes these brushes tend to be horribly laggy even the default ones so I've set the brush size down to 50 um, or I'll rage quit from how unresponsive it becomes now incidentally if I do a performance benchmark you'll see painter scores my benchmark has excellent but it complains uh, that I don't have this thing called AVX2 and that's something that only certain CPUs have and mine doesn't um, I find that the real wet brushes all use this AVX2 so that's probably why they're laggy for me so for the purposes of getting through this tutorial I'll just keep the brush size small and uh, run through the settings now, like the liquid ink layer, um, it creates its own layer. As you can see, it automatically created this when I made this stroke. And it's got something that normal layers don't have. If you right click, you can see you can wet the entire watercolor layer or dry it. Now, if we come up here to general, um, I showed you that you can select the wet method for any kind of brush. But there's also these dedicated watercolor brushes. So I'm going to go and pick watercolor camel hair. I'm going to set it to real wet cover. Now because it's a, a camel hair brush, once again you can adjust the feature in the bristles and uh, play with the settings in real bristle. But most of what you'll be toggling is here in the real watercolor panel. Wetness is how much water the brush holds and concentration is how much watercolor pigment is in the water so for example if we set the wetness high and the concentration low it's barely just tinted water if we set the wetness low and the concentration high then it's obviously a lot more vibrant so water viscosity is supposed to be the thickness of the water honestly don't really see much difference here myself Evaporation rate is how quickly the paint dries, so if you set it to 100, you're basically telling it to insta-dry. The settling rate is how much pigment is left on the paper after evaporation. Low levels means the paint looks quite watery because a lot of the pigment got evaporated. The weight is how quickly the pigment gets absorbed into the paper during evaporation. So basically the higher the weight, the more solid looking the paint is going to be and the lower the weight the more watery the lower the pickup rate the more of the underlying layer you're going to see 
the higher the pickup rate, the more the paint is going to look like gouache, which is an opaque version of watercolor. Flow in these paper settings are supposed to adjust how the paint looks on the paper. Unless you're using a really rough paper, you probably won't see much difference though. So the wind angle and force are supposed to work in tangent. It's kind of like how you would tilt your paper and watch the paint run. So the angle is which way you're tilting and the force is how much you're tilting. And obviously the paint would need to be wet. In reality, even with 100% force, it barely moves. This is what I'd expect from say 10% force. Now at 100% force, I expect something like this. Um, this incidentally was painted by my very talented cousin, Kim Clipstone. I put a link in the description to her Facebook page if you want to see more of her stuff. But yes, so the point is, if you're hoping for some drip effect, Corel paint is going to give you a bit of an anticlimax. So besides the real wet watercolors, we also have normal watercolor brushes, which you can access by choosing um, one of the ones that don't say real. They also use the watercolor layer, same as the uh, real watercolor brushes. They don't use this panel, instead they use this one. And uh, unlike the real wet brushes, these don't use the AVX2, which means I can use them at much bigger sizes without too much lag. So if we take down the wetness, We'll see it's not really much of a watercolor brush. The wetter we make it, the more watercolory it's going to look. So basically what that means is the more the water is going to pool and spread out around the edges, and the less bristle strokes you're going to see. See, this is zero and this is 100. The dry rate is how fast the paint dries. So if you max it out, you don't give the water a chance to pool and smudge, which means that the wetness scale becomes irrelevant. It's always going to act like it's set to zero wetness. The pickup works differently in the normal watercolor brushes. The real wet ones start to behave more like gouache with high pickup. Um, these ones don't really do much at all with low or high pickup, um, except you can get a salt effect with high pickup. In real life watercolor paintings, there's a technique that involves adding salt to wet paint on the canvas to soak up the colors and leave these bleached looking areas. Now, what I'm gonna show you now simulates that effect but it only seems to work once the paint is already dry which isn't the case in real life. Make sure your wind force is on zero, your pickup is at a hundred percent and your diffuse amount is at a hundred percent and set the dry rate really low. Now you'll see even though I have this pink color selected it's more removing paint than adding paint. The wind angle and force are just as disappointing in these as they are with the real wet brushes. So before we move on to thick paint brushes in the next episode, I also just want to point out that you do get particle brushes in the watercolor range. So if you want to play with those, be sure to check out episode three on particle brushes and then apply that knowledge uh, to what you've learned in this episode. So uh, this is the end of part four. Thanks for watching. Much obliged if you leave a like and subscribe. And it'd be great if you'd join me for thick paint brushes in the final part five.